All right, you've got it. The screenplay idea that will change the world, break all box office records, and win you every single Oscar. Only, you don't quite understand how to format your screenplay. Do you really even need to format a screenplay? The answer is a resounding yes. Proper screenplay format is necessary if you want anyone to take your magnum opus seriously or take you personally seriously as a filmmaker. But more importantly, it's necessary if you want your script to become an actual finished film. Hang on till the end of this video because I'm going to explain everything you need to know about how to properly format your upcoming film and video production screenplay or television show teleplay. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a full-time working photographer, video producer, video editor, and technology pro. I want to get going on the topic quickly, but do stick around till the end of this video because I'll tell you about some freebies and training courses that I offer to improve your photography, video production, and filmmaking work and help to grow your business through something known as earned media exposure, which is basically free advertising. If you like what you see, Smash that subscribe button and hit that bell to be notified every time I upload a new video each and every Wednesday. Remember, I welcome all your comments, questions, and more on all of my videos. Let's start by answering the simple question, what is a script? A movie script or screenplay is the blueprint for any feature film, TV show, or even a video game. Yes, those have scripts too, for those scenes that are in between play. A script includes characters, actions, dialogue, and movement, as well as stage direction. A shooting script is a more precisely formatted version of the actual script used in pre-production and production to turn the screenplay into a film. So, what do you need to properly format a script? It's not just stylistic. Script formatting helps the script breakdown process, which is one of the most important steps in turning a screenplay into an actual film. The script breakdown is when the director, producer, and a few other key crew members review your screenplay and mark every important element that will have to be procured to produce the film. Using a script breakdown sheet or some script breakdown software, they'll know every character that needs an actor, every costume change, every prop that needs to be found or built, and more. Think of it like this. Your script is the blueprint for the show everyone is about to spend 14 plus hours per day, seven days a week for the next nine to 12 months working on. So if you don't write, interior underground dungeon and you want a scene to be set in an underground dungeon, you're the only one to blame when your location manager doesn't find a nice underground dungeon for whatever the screen is that you wrote. This is why proper screenplay format will make this process immensely easier. Don't you want to make this painless for the nice crew people who are going to put your film together? They're turning your script into an actual movie, so treat them right. There's lots of screenwriting software available that can make this process a little more automated, but it's still important that you understand what the different elements within the script mean. Using these elements correctly is essential to proper script writing formatting. This is true for everything from short film scripts to multi-million dollar Hollywood blockbusters. The first element you want to know about are what's called slug lines. Slug lines, also known as scene headings, tell the reader where the action is happening. It's location followed by a time and looks a little bit like this example you see on screen. When it comes to slug lines, you first have to establish whether the scene takes place inside, which is written as INT period, or outside, which is written as EXT period. Then the location of the scene followed by the time of day, such as day, night, evening, morning, or whatever it is. If a scene directly continues from the previous scene, mark it as continuous in the time slot. If it's a couple minutes later, feel free to use moments later in your slug line. 
If it's a flashback, you will put, what do you think? Flashback, of course. Sometimes you'll have a scene that takes place in both an interior and an exterior. Most of the time, this will be in a moving vehicle of some kind or characters walking around or something like that. In those cases, you start your slug line with the words INT period slash EXT period. If you're using screenwriting software, it will format it correctly for you but if you're doing it yourself, be sure to put the entire slug line in all caps. Slug lines are important because they are how your assistant directors and line producers will plan out how things get shot. The difference between one scene being night and the next being day is important to continuity for hair, makeup, and wardrobe in other departments. That's why this is one of the most essential elements in movie script formatting. It tells you when and where a scene is taking place in the grand scheme of the entire script. Knowing the time of day and where the scene takes place affects nearly every other department in a major way. Number two are what's known as action lines. Your action lines go right beneath the slug line. Proper screenplay format dictates that they're always to be written in the present tense and as visually descriptive as possible. Specifically, action lines tell the reader what they will see and hear in the finished film. You can give actors vague directions, such as Jonathan is upset by this, but only if it's something that the actor can physically portray. Leave all those internal thoughts for the novel you're writing on the side. When it comes to screenplay formatting, clarity is king. Remember, a script is a document to be turned into a movie and not actually read on its own. Department heads will take things literally and oftentimes without question. So if you write something ridiculous in the description, they'll take it upon themselves to figure out how to make it real. That's their job. And you don't want to be responsible for waiting time and time wasted and money spent on some nonsense that you put in the script. So only put what's actually important. Make sure you're deliberate and precise with your action lines. Find the balance between letting a director direct the scene and giving the prop master enough information to get exactly what's needed. This is especially true if you're writing something as chaotic as a fight scene or a car chase where every detail has to be planned out. The more complicated the production, the more important it is for you to follow proper script formatting. This type of work is why screenwriting formatting was developed the way that it was. The next thing you want to be aware of are capitalization rules. There are two hard and fast rules for capitalization in screenplay format. Always capitalize a character's name the first time that they appear and always capitalize transitions. Beyond that, you can also capitalize important props, sounds, and camera movements. Anything you want to use the movie script format to call out things that are important to merit the attention of those doing the script breakdown. Just don't go overboard with it. There's nothing more annoying and confusing than when something randomly capitalizes everything on the page. You know, like the title I have below. Number three is dialogue. Dialogue is straightforward, at least in terms of formatting. Writing good dialogue is a topic all its own, and I've actually done another video on that topic as well. I'll put a link to that in the video description below so you can watch it after you watch this video and you can learn more tips on writing better dialogue. You center and capitalize a character ID and put the dialogue underneath that. Your character ID need not be your entire character's name. It could be a first name, a last name, or an alias. Whatever best identifies the character as that character. And stay consistent. If a character is identified as McLean, he stays McLean throughout the script, even if we eventually learn that his first name is John. The only exception to this rule is if your character goes in disguise, especially if they fake a voice while being disguised. For example, this person would be Bruce Wayne, while this person would be Batman, even though they're technically the same person in a different costume. If you find that to be too confusing, another method would be to use a slash. Bruce Wayne becomes Bruce Wayne slash Batman. Whenever he's Batman 
and just regular Bruce Wayne when he's, he's not Batman. And just to be absolutely clear, here's how dialogue looks in an actual screenplay. Don't put it in quotes as you would in a book. When writing dialogue, the idea is to let the characters speak for themselves. Always front and center, of course, is the reality that you, the writer, are shaping those characters. Using software that takes care of screenplay formatting actually allows you to focus all of your attention on the characters and their lines and not spend time thinking about formatting those lines. Number four are what's known as extensions. Extensions go next to a character name in parentheses and tell us how the dialogue is heard by the audience. Most screenwriting software will provide the standard screenplay format extensions once you start typing the parenthetical. Those extensions are voiceover, which is written as parentheses, V period, O period, close parentheses. When a character is speaking over the action but isn't heard by the other characters in the scene. Usually narration, but can also be a character's internal monologue. Off screen, parentheses, O period, S period, close parentheses. When a character is speaking and is heard by other characters, but they can't be seen by the audience or those other characters. Just write OS for off screen next to the character's name. Off camera or OC is also acceptable. Examples of extensions include someone making an announcement over a loudspeaker, a character making a dramatic surprise entrance, or a disembodied ghostly voice. Next are into devices. Fairly self-explanatory, characters speaking into their phones or radios rather than to each other are examples. This is most useful when characters are speaking to someone on the phone or for when a local news station is providing expository information. Next is pre-lap. Dialogue from the next scene that starts before the current scene has ended. Simply write pre-lap in the parentheses next to the character's name. Number five are parentheticals. Parentheticals can seem like extensions at first glance, but there are a few key distinctions. Extensions are technical directions. They explain where the person saying the dialogue is in the scene. Parentheticals are directions to the actor themselves. They detail how the line should be performed. Here's an example of a parenthetical in proper screenplay format. As far as script format goes, parentheticals are placed directly beneath the character ID, in parentheses of course, some examples include as loud as possible, painfully, tearfully, whispering or laughing. Parentheticals can also include actions for the actors to perform while speaking. This is especially common in television where page space is at a premium. Some examples might include shrugging, stretching, drawing his weapon or falling to their knees. If you're using screenwriting software, it is important to change elements when writing parentheticals. You can't just write them into parentheses and hope that it reads correctly. Number six are transitions. Transitions indicate how an editor should transition between two scenes. They're on the far right side of the page and are right justified and placed between two scenes like this example. Back in the 1940s, knowing how to use transitions was a major part in knowing how to format a screenplay. These days, however, most editors know that no transition indicates a standard cut. So rather than mark everything with cut to, only use a transition when you want it to stand out in some way, such as a crossfade or a split screen or something out of the ordinary. Proper screenplay formatting usually indicates these as being capitalized. Much like with parentheticals, your screenwriting software will likely have the standard transitions preloaded for you. These include, but are not limited to, cut to. Any transition not marked is assumed to be a cut. This particular transition indicates a more abrupt cut than normal. It is widely used when formatting multicam scripts as it marks the end of a scene. Because multicam scripts are formatted with page breaks for both scenes and acts, it's important to notify when the scene is ending versus when it's an actual act break, which is also a commercial break in TV. This is key for editing purposes and also readership as act breaks are critical 
plot-wise. Next to what's known as Smash 2. This is a really, really, really abrupt cut. The kind of cut that comes in mid-sentence. A great example of Smash cuts is from the ending of the series The Sopranos. Next is Dissolve 2. Use this when one scene dissolves into another scene, almost transforming into that scene. This is primarily used to indicate that time has passed. Next is Match Cut 2. A tricky form of edit where you cut the film so that the last shot in the previous scene matches the first shot in the new scene. This is a great transition to use if you're looking to build foreshadowing or tension in your story. Calling attention to specific actions and objects that will later be critical in the story somehow. Next is what's known as intercut. This is where you bounce back and forth between two different scenes. It's usually used for phone calls, but not always. It's important to list if this is expected, as it can have a big effect on the overall production schedule. Now, if this isn't making sense to you, but I've got it in the comments section below. Number seven are subheaders. Subheaders are like mini slug lines that indicate another place or time within a scene. They're even formatted like slug lines, left justified and capitalized. If you're using screenwriting software, you'll probably have to format it as a scene header and that's perfectly fine. If you're shooting within a large house, for example, a subheader might be used to indicate a change in rooms, from the creepy foyer to the haunted library, for example, or to indicate a detail of a certain location that's important. Or you might want to use a subheader to indicate a jump in time. If a cop is on a long stakeout and you want to show that time has passed, you'd throw it under the subheader later. This is one of the gray areas in script formatting where some, mostly those in production, say that it should be slugged as a new scene since it's a different time of day and may require a different setup or different lighting or something like that. Writers, on the other hand, tend to prefer to save the lines so that they don't push a page. So instead of saying interior car later, which requires more space, they just say later and continue the scene since it never changed locations. Either way is proper script formatting. The use of a subheader is really just a more casual way of doing it. Number eight are specific shots. Formatted like a caps locked action line, shots direct our attention to a specific visual or a way of seeing something. Much like transitions, these were much more common in the old days of Hollywood. In modern times, they're typically used by writer-directors, but also when a writer feels that a visual is key to the entire scene and wants to be sure that the director knows it. Most screenwriters today only specify shots when it's absolutely critical to the interpretation of the scene. By indicating a particular type of shot in a script, keep in mind that you as a writer are also hammering home to the reader that this is a movie and that cameras will be recording it. On a certain level, this can take the reader out of the story, so you might want to use the technique sparingly. Also, keep in mind that determining shots is the director's job, so they may or may not take the writer's advice. However, most good directors will at least consider these types of directions as they may truly be needed to properly shoot the scene. Number nine is the montage. To start a montage, write begin montage as if it were a subheader. Then list out your scenes as you normally would. Once the montage is over and Rocky finally runs up all those steps, close off your montage with end montage. Again, written as if it were a subheader. That's scene heading if you're using screen writing software. With a montage, you have some leeway in how you write it. For example, writers often prefer to simply list individual lines or lines set off by hyphens within the action to indicate different montage locations and subscenes. Just know that if you want to format your script for production, you'll need a slug line for each individual shot or scene within a montage as the montage example that you're seeing. That's because each location means a different setup and a whole separate set of production concerns. Number 10 are lyrics. Lyrics are tricky when it comes to how to format a screenplay. 
particularly when they have to be matched to action on the screen. No screenwriting software has a lyrics element. An important rule of thumb when learning how to write a screenplay is that, when done properly, one page of film script equals roughly one minute of screen time. Emphasis on roughly. Since lyrics take up a lot of page space, but don't take as much time to sing, that can throw the balance off. You have two options for solving this problem. The first is to space it out. You can spread out the lyrics on a page with shots and action directions. This will let you design a little bit of the choreography and help establish the rhythm and pacing of your big musical number. The other option is to describe the sequence. Rather than list out each individual lyric, describe the general feel of the song and the sequence that accompanies it. Keep in mind the musical sequence of La La Land, for example. Number 11 are chirons. Chirons are the text that appears over the screen, usually used to indicate the time and place of a scene to the audience. You'll see this sort of thing a lot in military or spy movies. Start an action line with the word Chiron in all caps, followed by the text of the Chiron. Some writers like to use the word title instead of Chiron. It's a personal choice. If you were using title, it would look like this example here. Using Chiron would look exactly the same, only you swap out the word Chiron for title. Number 12 is the end of the act. This is a special kind of formatting that's only important if you're writing for network television. Whenever you reach the end of an act, or a teaser, where the show would cut to a commercial break, note it by putting end of act one, or act two, or act three, or whatever, centered and underlined into your script. Then you skip a page and put the next act number. So act two, act three, act four, whatever it is, at the very top, the next number, again, centered and underlined. If you're using screenwriting software, it's very important that you open your template as a one hour or a half hour drama. If you open it as a feature film, the screenwriting software may not include that element. Also, keep in mind that a single camera sitcom and a multi camera sitcom have very different script formats. The single camera is essentially a movie script with act breaks, while the multi camera has double spaced dialogue, capitalized action lines, and the new acts begin halfway down the page. And each new scene starts on a new page, as I just mentioned. Make sure you know which one you're writing and then write to that specific screenplay format. These two types of shows have quite different tones, aesthetics, and productions. It's critical that the reader, and even more important, the production crew, know which one you've written. My question of the day is, what is your big script idea? Leave a comment below and let me know. If you found the information in this video useful, I'd like to hear about it from you. If you liked it and want to see more videos like this, then follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films. If you think what you saw was great, please do like it. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. If you know someone who could benefit from the information that I provided, please share the video. You can connect with me and my company, Jim Costa Films, on social media and online, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and the web by searching for Jim Costa Films. In fact, I currently have over 4,500 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Thank you for sticking around this long. I mentioned at the beginning about some freebies and training. As a professional video producer and photographer, I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you on all the best camera settings to shoot with your DSLR, mirrorless, or video camera that will show you the settings that will allow your photos and particularly your videos to shine and stand out from the competition. The link to get that cheat sheet is just below in the video description. Best of all, my cheat sheet specializes in shooting video with any type of camera. In it, you'll find all the info you need on important video techniques, such as white balance, color temperature, frame rates, and much more. I've also created an editing training course for Adobe Premiere Pro. My quick start training is designed to get you up and editing video in under two hours and includes over 100 tips, tricks, and keyboard shortcuts for video editors that get you started in the program and makes your workflow go much faster. 
Now, I'm also affiliated with Christina Nicholson, a fellow media veteran like myself who helps businesses and entrepreneurs reach tons of their ideal customers or clients through the power of media without spending big bucks on advertising. I've worked with Christina and used her advice and training successfully, so I know from first-hand experience that it works great. The program Christina and I are now offering is called the Media Mentoring Program, and it will help you to take advantage of mainstream media so you can stand out from the competition because that's not something everyone has access to. Best of all, unlike paid ads and sponsorships, you can gain lots of exposure and credibility to become the go-to brand everyone talks about and wants to do business with without spending a fortune on advertising because the program is designed to get you free advertising. I'll link to those cheat sheets and training courses in the description below as well. There's videos on both courses that will give you an overview of how they can help you as well as links to get more information. You can help to support my channel by purchasing my training courses, requesting my free downloads, or by hiring me to shoot and edit for you. Remember, I've also done other videos on filmmaking, video production, photography, and others on screenwriting as well, and I'll link to those in the description below as well. Finally, if you follow me for a while now, you know that I have a private community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers, just like you on Facebook, where I share other pro tips and tricks. It's called Video Producers and Content Creators. I love new members who want to share their work, learn from others, and also help others based on their own skills and experiences. The group is private and only for people in the filmmaking, video production, and photography industries that I personally work in. It's not a public group like my business Facebook page that I talked about earlier. That's public and anyone can see that. You'll find a link to that group in the description below, so feel free to join it where you can learn even more.